Well, thanks for joining me for another week <clears throat> of a leadership thought. Uh, I'm sorry about last week. Uh, I've learned that this works a whole lot better if you turn your mic on. So I apologize for that and I've made that correction. Thanks to those that let me know that there was no sound that I could adjust it. So we're gonna do the same study we were doing last week only with the mute button off. So thanks for joining me as we continue to grow together to be leaders and to be challenged ultimately by God's word in our leadership of the church. We look at a secular example and then we also look at a biblical example to reinforce what we are looking for and what we're studying. We're working through this book by John Maxwell, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. This week we're looking at the law of empowerment. Now John tells a story in this chapter on the law of empowerment about Henry Ford. Now Henry Ford was a car maker. Now, I think Henry had a good idea on cars. I'm just more of a Toyota kind of guy. However, Henry had a great vision to get cars into working people's hands and to have it available to the average American worker. And he was extremely successful. Many people still drive Fords today. However, Maxwell tells a story about Henry Ford that takes a little bit of a twist on this car that we're looking in front of us. This is the Model T car. And the story is that this is one of Henry Ford's first uh, babies, his one of his first cars, and he loved this car. And he had people that were around him and they saw areas to improve. And so they took the prototype of the Model T car and they went and they they rearranged some things and they made some things better. And the story goes that when Henry came in and he saw the car, he was so angry that these people went and readjusted his car or modified his car that he ripped the doors off the car and he then went to destroy the entire car with his bare hands. He didn't want anyone touching his prototype or touching his baby. Many times that can happen, that type of mentality can come into the church, especially with ministries that we started or that we are involved in or we have a lot of, quote, skin in the game. And we don't knowingly have that attitude. I don't think we have that attitude. But sometimes we have that mentality in our ministry. And anytime someone comes in and modifies or dare I say change something, we end up taking and ripping that down and hurting the person that's trying to make it better. And we end up not empowering them, but we end up crushing them. We need to help people reach their full potential. And John Maxwell says this on page 146. He says, to lead others well, we must help them reach their potential. And many times people won't reach their potential because we are uh, the ones holding them back. Either they don't want to come around us or they're afraid to ask permission or they're afraid to change things because we'll have offense to that. So many times we as leaders are called to help people reach their potential. That means, what's it mean to be on their side? Maxwell says on page 145, it means being on their side. It means encouraging them. It means giving them the power and helping them to succeed. It's giving them feedback. It's encouraging them. It's helping them walk through what went well and then walk through what did not go well. You see, sometimes what happens is we end up just doing it and we don't empower people because it's easier and quicker if we just do it ourselves. But yet I come back to the question, is that really empowering or even the other word, equipping someone for the work of ministry? No, it's just us doing it and us telling them, watch what I do and do exactly as I would do. You see, we want to be leaders that lead well, and so we want to help people reach their full potential by encouragement, by giving them power, by giving them feedback, and then stepping back and watching them succeed. And my hope for myself and my hope for you is that when people do that and they change some of the ministry, they change some of the parts of the car, if you will, that we would not go and rip that apart. I'm not talking about doctrinal things that we need to correct. I'm talking about preferences that we need to be watching out for.
Let's turn and look at God's Word. I picked Acts chapter 6 this morning as we look at this because this is the time that the apostles are busy ministering. The apostles are busy ministering the Word. They're teaching the Word. They're able to do the miracles because that's what Jesus has empowered them to do. And the early church is just exploding and many people are coming to know the Lord. But there's also areas that the apostles are not able to minister to and that's the daily distribution of food. And so what happens is the apostles, they go and they equip and they find deacons to do it. But notice in the scriptures that I have, and you could read longer in Acts chapter 6, I just stopped at verse 3. The apostles, they don't tell the deacons how to do it. The apostles, they give the deacons the task. They paint the vision. This is the problem that we have. This is what we need to do to be able to fix the problem that we have. Now, guys, why don't you go and why don't you do it? You figure out the details, but this is the task that we want to have accomplished. If you look at the deacons, they had a standard of life and they had to have certain qualifications. This wasn't just anyone that was willing to help. They had to meet certain specifications for the ministry. So the first question I have for application is who are you helping bringing into ministry? Who are you helping to bring alongside of you to help you accomplish the task? You see, what happens is that as we go back to Acts chapter 6, I don't see anywhere in Scripture where the apostles came back to the deacons and said, Deacons, you need to do it this way. Deacons, you need to do it that way. You're not doing it the right way. You're not doing it my way. The apostles went and said, Hey, go and do this. Figure out how to distribute the food. We're going to do what we're called to do. You do what you're called to do. And we're going to see the name of Jesus be glorified and the gospel go out further. The apostles did not come back and micromanage them. They came back and encouraged them and gave them the power and helped them to succeed. Now, how about you? Let's get into some application for this afternoon on this Wednesday. How about you? Are you more like Henry Ford? with a no hands on my ministry approach don't you touch my ministry don't you change it or i'm going to come in and i'm going to take it right back to where it is i would dare say i know all of you and i don't think that you're that way but sometimes it can come across that way and we need to be careful with that so let's not be like henry ford let's be like the apostles who are eager to equip eager to encourage eager to inspire a group of people that want to serve hey come on let's do this together let's figure this out together and let's encourage each other and let's continue to reach out with the gospel of jesus christ oftentimes we and i think of myself in the best light i give myself a lot of grace and sometimes i give myself no grace but one thing i want you to challenge yourself with is evaluate the last four months are you a leader that is doing it all yourself? Are you a leader that's telling people this is how it has to be done, it's my way or no way, or I'm gonna rip the doors off this ministry? Or are you one that you find yourself coming alongside of someone, encouraging them, equipping them, inspiring them, hey, come on, why don't you come help me out? I don't have this all figured out, but this is what we need to do. This is a ministry that needs to be accomplished. Which one are you more like? Are you more like Henry Ford? Or are you more like the apostles? If I can help you in any way, I hope that you'll reach out. I hope that these encourage you. I hope that they cause you to pause and think and that there is a nugget of truth that I have been able to put into your life to help you continue to grow to be the leader that God has called you to be and the leader God has called me to be because we're both learning together. Hope you have a great Wednesday. I'll see you next week.